So one of the questions we get asked the most is, what's the difference between stabilized chlorine and unstabilized chlorine? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're finally gonna answer that. Well, we've answered the question before on our website, but in this video, we're gonna answer the question, which one should you use? What's the difference? Let's find out. All right, just a quick disclaimer. Everybody has a different way of taking care of a pool. This is just our way of doing it. And based on my many, many years in the pool industry and the research that we've done here at Swim University. And if I missed anything in this video, please leave a comment below and we'll clear things up. All right, so first, what is chlorine? Chlorine is a sanitizer. It is a halogen sanitizer. It is one of the most effective sanitizers for your swimming pool, and it is the most common. Normally, we wanna keep our chlorine between one and three parts per million. If you have a normal chlorine pool or a salt water pool, both of those should stay roughly around three parts per million of chlorine at all times to make sure that your pool is completely sanitized. Now there are two different types of chlorine there is, and you'll commonly see them referred to as stabilized and unstabilized chlorine. So unstabilized chlorine is generally just chlorine. It is what it is. And the reason it's unstabilized is because when you add it to your pool, the UV rays from the sun will burn off the chlorine very fast. And so chlorine, that's unstabilized tends to come in a powder form or a granular form similar to shock or just like chlorine granulars that you would throw directly into the pool. In fact, if you buy something called shock, then it's probably unstabilized chlorine, but you wanna check the label because again, there are so many different types of shocks out there, but commonly shock is unstabilized chlorine. And what that means is that the chlorine is susceptible to the sun burning it off. There is no protectant, it is not stabilized, which is the opposite of unstabilized, where stabilized chlorine protects it from being burned off by the sun. Not 100%, but it protects it. Now, why would you add unstabilized chlorine to a pool if it, the sun's just gonna burn it off? Well, typically, you would add it because you want the sun to burn it off, meaning it's a short burst of chlorine that you're trying to add to the pool and then, and you want it to be super high. So this is what shocking is. Shocking is really just a method of chlorination. And so when you add shock to a pool or a bunch of unstabilized chlorine to a pool, you are raising the chlorine level of that pool to a very, very high level, which is killing bacteria and oxidizing the current chlorine that's in there. And so when you do that, you want the sun, when it comes out, to burn that chlorine off as fast as possible so that you can be back down to a normal level. So typically, shock or any granular chlorine is unstabilized chlorine, meaning that it is susceptible to the sun. And so if you watch our shocking video, which we have on this channel, you'll know that shocking your pool, or at least we recommend shocking your pool at night so that you get the most out of that shock because the sun's not out, it's not gonna burn off chlorine, you have it mixed into the pool, it's gonna be high chlorine for a very long period of time when really no one is swimming in it, I mean, unless you're swimming in the middle of the night, but if you're shocking it, do not swim in it, and the chlorine will be high, and then when the sun comes out the next day, it'll start to burn it off. Now, if you want to use unstabilized chlorine to sanitize your pool, you can certainly do that. Um, they actually make a chemical called cyanuric acid, which is what makes chlorine stable. It is an acid that you would put into the pool that is also known as chlorine stabilizer, see? And the chlorine stabilizer will actually protect the chlorine from being burned off by the sun. Now, typically you won't see anything labeled unstabilized chlorine. Like you're not gonna go and see a bag of shock or any bucket of chlorine that says unstabilized chlorine. When you look for shock, you wanna look for calcium hypochlorite, which is essentially unstabilized chlorine. Okay, so what is stabilized chlorine? Well, it's the opposite of unstabilized chlorine. A uh, duh. I'm sorry, that was mean. 
It usually comes in the form of a tablet. So if you're buying a chlorine tablets at your local pool store or online, uh, and it's the active ingredient is trichlor, then chances are you have stabilized chlorine, which means it has cyanuric acid in it, which protects it from being burned off by the UV rays of the sun. And this is great too, because you can use shock or unstabilized chlorine if you wanna super chlorinate your water and kill a lot of bacteria. And then you can use stabilized chlorine to keep the chlorine at around three parts per million at all times. And the stabilized chlorine usually lasts about three to five times longer than unstabilized chlorine. And when you add these pucks to your pool, you can add it via a chlorine floater or within your skimmer basket. Or what we recommend is to add them to a automatic chlorinator. That is your best bet for adding chlorine pucks and keeping the water at three parts per million on a classic chlorine pool. But if you're adding chlorine pucks or chlorine tablets and they are stabilized because they're trichlor, then it is adding chlorine stabilizer or cyanuric acid to your water in very, very low amounts because it is stabilized chlorine. That's what that means. But either way, you're going to want to add chlorine stabilizer or cyanuric acid to your water, whether you're using just unstabilized chlorine or a mix of unstabilized and stabilized chlorine, just to make sure that both of those things are kind of stabilized together. And you wanna keep your cyanuric acid at a very specific level. We wanna keep the cyanuric acid between 30 and 80 parts per million. Ideally, you wanna keep it at around 50 parts per million. If your cyanuric level goes too high, it can cause problems with your sanitizer, speaking of chlorine, and the only way to lower cyanuric acid is to dilute your pool water. Okay, so hopefully you know the difference between stabilized chlorine and unstabilized chlorine. It's pretty simple. So the final question is, well, which one should you use? If you have an outdoor pool, you're gonna wanna use a combination of both unstabilized and stabilized chlorine. Unstabilized chlorine for shocking and high chlorination for oxidation in your water and stabilized chlorine for just general you know, keeping your pool at around three parts per million because it's just gonna last longer with the tablets and they're easier to add than constantly adding unstabilized chlorine to your pool. Now, if you have a saltwater pool, you are constantly adding unstabilized chlorine to your pool and you can use cyanuric acid to help the sun not to burn off the chlorine that you're generating. And whenever you super chlorinate it, again, you're just adding a bunch of unstabilized chlorine to the pool because you're not generating cyanuric acid with a salt water system. You're gonna need to add that separately. And then if you have an indoor pool, you really are not bothered by the UV rays of the sun too much if you have a you know, a cover, if you have the sun peeking through, well then you're gonna have to worry about it. And if you have an indoor pool, I recommend keeping your cyanuric acid or your chlorine stabilizer level at around 10 parts per million. Okay, again, taking care of a pool, everyone's got a different way of doing it. There's different ranges when it comes to how much cyanuric acid to add to a pool, how much chlorine to add to the pool. And generally, that's why we like to give a large range, but, but tell you what the ideal is. And that's what we gave you here. So the ideal for chlorine is around three parts or three parts per million. And with cyanuric acid, you want it at about 50 parts per million. Real quick, I also wanna mention that we have a very, very in-depth course on how to take care of your swimming pool. If you just go to swimuniversity.com slash pool dash care dash handbook, we have a 35 lesson video course and counting, and we have a full 300 plus page digital ebook. It's all together in one package, teaching you really in-depth stuff, everything that you need to know about taking care of a pool. Just wanted to put that out there for you in case you were interested in something like that. And everyone's got a different way of doing it, and this is just our way, and I hope that answers your questions. But if we didn't, if we missed something, please leave a comment below and we'll definitely get it cleared up and perhaps do a future video. Also, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. You can get more pool and hot tub care videos like this every single week, whenever we publish them all season long. And check out some of our other videos. You might find them useful. You might learn something about your pool. And we're just trying to help. So thanks again for watching. That's it. As always, happy swimming.